was my song. Amen. That was my song. I'm not going to sing. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. What would we do without the Holy Ghost? Amen. Church say praise the Lord today. We need the Holy Ghost. Elder, we need the Holy Ghost in the morning. We need the Holy Ghost in the noonday. We need the Holy Ghost all day long. Can the church say amen? We thank him today because the Lord is good, and his mercy certainly endureth unto all generations. As I commonly say and quote the scripture, he's a God of truth. Can the church say amen? amen. And in him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. The Lord is truthful, and that simply deals with his trustworthiness. Amen. So when you praise the Lord, you're praising somebody that is able to get the job done. He can do what no man can do. Can the church say amen? One songwriter said, he can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. There are many powers out here. Praise the Lord. But there's one power that's above all other powers. And we can take it to him, Sister Tiny. We can look to him, amen, and he can fix it. Praise the Lord. Let Jesus fix it for you this morning. He knows how to fix it. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we got to take it out of our hands. And Sister Richardson, we got to put it in the hands of somebody who knows how to do it. And I'm glad about that. When my daughter was in the hospital and, and I went outside of that, that room when she came out and I didn't know what to do. Praise the Lord. Because this was one that I couldn't fix. You know, as parents, you know, we want to fix everything. We want to make sure that if, 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 if there's anything we can do, we try to do it. Uh, but I come to tell you, sometimes God will put you in a predicament where all of your efforts will be for naught. You just have to trust him. You got to just believe his word and allow him to do what he wants to do. Can the church say amen? I want to call your attention to three places in your Bible. Three places, three scriptures. Can the church say amen? Two from the book of Isaiah and one from the book of St. John. Let's go to Isaiah chapter number 50, or excuse me, 45 first, verse 15. Then also get Isaiah 55, and I believe it is verse 6. Yes, 55 and 6, and then also get St. John chapter number 8 in your hand. When you have it, you can say, I'm there. <laughs> All right, let's read here. It says, Verily thou art a God that hideth thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Now let's go to 55. And verses 6. Very familiar scripture. Let's read here. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let's go now to St. John. Chapter 8. Verses numbers 59. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? Say, I'm there. Let's read. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple 
going through the midst of them, so pass by. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we look unto thee, O God. We bless you right now. We ask, O Lord, that you may, O God, add a special blessing upon your word. Your word is already blessed. We pray, O God, that your spirit will come in, O God, that we may understand that which you want to do, how you desire to save, to heal, to deliver, to make ways where there be no ways, open up doors for your children. Give us what we need right now. Inspire our minds, Lord, to walk this journey and live for you, O God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Here in this text that we just read, St. John chapter number 8 and verses numbers 59. The scripture reads again, Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, so passed by. I want to talk to you from this thought today. This could be your last chance. This could be your last chance. And for a subthought, if I can use this coming from the latter clause of this verse, just to keep in your mind, where the scripture said, so pass by. If you can just think about this also, don't let Jesus pass you by. This particular chapter that this verse is in, it is a very very powerful and revelatory chapter in your Bible in as much as Jesus is engaging with individuals that Brother Bobby should have had some sort of knowledge of who he was. As he deals with them in this chapter, the Pharisees, the religious element of that day, they are to a certain degree calling him into question as to who he was. Now, it's evident by the acts of Jesus, Elder, and all the things that he did that his works spoke for him. One place it talked about when they, even when John the Baptist was asking as to whether or not they should look for another. Of course, this is when he was in prison. He was about ready to be executed unjustly. The anointing of God, of course, had lifted off of him. He was no longer in the place of the forerunner in as much as his ministry, so as to speak. He asked, should we look for another? Jesus responds to his disciples and say, and told them to tell John that the lame walk, the deaf speak, the dumb speak, The blinded eyes are open. So it is evident from their scripture that the very things that their God, Jehovah, which is our God, Jesus, spoke to them what happened, happened exactly according to what he said. But something strange or profound happen is that why Jesus saints was in the midst of them Jesus was walking with them Jesus even said it in this particular chapter I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life so it is evident that the light that lighteth the world Brothers and sisters was among them. 
But even though this light was seen, they could not recognize the light that they had. This is very strange to me because it would seem easy if you were in darkness, praise the Lord, and you could not even see, praise the Lord, how can I say, your hand in front of your face. And somebody came in and flipped the light switch, and all of a sudden your hand became visible. You would be willing to recognize that something changed in your atmosphere. Amen. But something profound here that is powerful, praise the Lord, happened even in the midst of them. While Jesus is doing all of these wonderful things, the scripture is emphatic that the Lord is a God that hideth himself. And the only way, Sister Cleta, that we can see him, praise the Lord, is that he has to show himself to us. Praise God. So Jesus has this powerful discourse with them. Amen. He speaks of who he is. He even speaks of their forefathers. He speaks of Abraham. Praise the Lord. He speaks, praise the Lord, of who their true father was. And they were trying to claim that Abraham was their father. But if you go back and you read the text, he said, Brother Wally, he said, if you were the children of Abraham, praise the Lord, you would do the works of Abraham. If you were truly, praise the Lord, spiritually a child of Abraham, you would have faith in the light that Abraham saw. Praise God. Many years ago, thousands of years ago, when he rejoiced to see my day, praise Lord, me in the spirit, praise God, when I came to him and told him I'm the almighty God, you would have that type of faith. Praise the Lord to receive me. Can the church say amen? What I want you to get today, brothers and sisters, praise the Lord, that these individuals that were looking at Jesus, this could have been their last chance, thank God, to recognize who the Father was. Praise the Lord. And there are people today, saints, uh, that Jesus is passing by them on a daily basis, Brother Wally, but they cannot see him because he's a God that hideth himself. Um, and I'm so glad, saints, that one day, praise God, when Jesus was passing by me, Praise the Lord. The gospel was being preached. Uh, Jesus was passing by me. Uh, thank God. And I reached out and said, there I see you, Lord. Thank God. I see your power. I see your glory. I see you moving, Lord. I believe your word. Can the church say amen today? And so this text, praise the Lord, these, uh, thank God, texts that we have read from, they are powerful. Amen. Isaiah even said, praise God, in Isaiah 55, uh, he makes the point, uh, amen, we must seek him while he may be found. Uh, amen. Hallelujah, Sister Amy, that indicates uh, there's a time when he can be found, uh, and there's a time when he cannot be found. Uh, amen. And I want to make sure that I, as the songwriter said, I hear every message clear, uh, that every word comes through. Whenever God is talking, uh, amen, don't let him pass you by. Uh, Jesus spends a whole chapter here, uh, amen, hallelujah, defending the Father, uh, amen, in his seat, uh, amen, as the Son of God that came to them, uh, thank God, to save the lost. Uh, and they could not see him. And I want you to know, uh, amen, I don't care what you do, don't let God pass you by. Uh, Amen. You got to seek him while he may be found. Amen. Because there's coming a time where men, saints, will run to and fro in the earth seeking the word of God. They'll seek truth and won't be able to find it. But I come to tell you, thank God this morning, you are in a place, thank God, where the word of God, the truth of God, thank God, is being projected in the earth. Amen. And don't be like these, hallelujah, Jews. Hallelujah. They let Jesus pass through their midst. It is amazing to me that as Jesus is speaking to them and telling them and trying to give them life that they would be willing and have the audacity to pick up stones and try to stone Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus, now this is something to think about here. Amen. If you are in a group of individuals, listen to me for a minute, and you have everybody's attention, everybody's looking at you, Thank God, hallelujah, and all of a sudden, you just hide 
hide yourself uh, and you slip out of their midst. That's what Jesus did. Uh, they thought that they can take him, hallelujah, since the Christian, but it wasn't his hour. Uh, Jesus said, no man taketh my life. Uh, I got the power to, amen, lay it down and take it up again. Uh, amen, hallelujah. And the Bible said that Jesus, uh, he just passed out of their midst. Uh, amen, and I come to tell you, this could be your last chance. Uh, so don't you let Jesus pass you by. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be like these individuals uh, that heard his word and said, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus means nothing to me. Uh, but I come to tell you, he's everything Sandy, to me. Uh, the songwriter said, he's my everything. Uh, he's my everything. Jesus, uh, he's my everything. He's my mother. Uh, he's my father. He's my sister. He's my brother. Praise the Lord. Lord, when men forsake me, uh, then shall the Lord lift me up. I'm glad about that. Uh, amen. Praise God. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, we got to catch this in the text, saints, uh, because Jesus is a God uh, that's available at a certain point in time. Uh, amen. And why people today uh, are losing their chance to receive life. Uh, life is in the earth. You see, the Bible said uh, when Jesus came, that darkness, uh, amen, gross darkness was upon the people. There was darkness was all over the land. Uh, amen. And all of a sudden, light showed up. Uh, and you know what light does? Saint? It dispels evil. Uh, amen. It dispels darkness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, and when the light of his countenance showed up, uh, thank God, in our life, what happened? Uh, they got the darkness had to flee. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. All of the things uh, that held us captive all of a sudden, uh, the weights of sin, hallelujah, uh, it just, hallelujah, fell off of us. I come to tell you, uh, thank God. Don't let Jesus pass you by uh, while he's walking up and down the aisles of the church. Uh, you need to reach out your hand uh, and feel after him uh, happily that you may find him. Uh, you may be going through something. Uh, you may be have something all in, in your mind uh, that's causing your faith to slip. Uh, and I come to tell you and praise the Lord. Uh, don't let Jesus hide himself from you, uh, but reach out and touch the Lord. Uh, why he may be found. Uh, amen. In an acceptable time. Uh, hallelujah. I come to tell you this morning uh, that he's a God at hand uh, and he's not a God afar off. Uh, there was a time when we couldn't touch him. Uh, but I heard the Bible say it like this. Uh, we have not a high priest uh, that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Uh, brothers and sisters, I may not know how you feel uh, but I got a God at hand. Uh, amen. This passing by. Uh, he's passing by the midst of me. Uh, so what we got to do now, we got to reach out and touch him. Uh, and you know something about touching Jesus? Uh, there's never an equal exchange uh, for what I give out to touch him. Uh, I get so much more in return uh, if I reach out and touch him. Uh, because look, look, listen to the text saints. Uh, he passed by the midst. Uh, what he did is he hid himself. Uh, because they were trying to take him yeah. and he said it's not time for me to be taken yeah. but I'm going to get myself when I'm ready yeah. and he just passed out of their midst of yeah. hallelujah don't let Jesus pass you by him, yeah. some of y'all been waiting well when am I going to get saved? I come to tell you now is an acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. And the day that you hear his voice, hard and not so hard. I come to tell you, you got to come right now. Because there will be a time where you will seek after him. But he been and hid himself. You see what Jesus did. And the reason why they couldn't see him. I'm going to slow down here. The reason why they couldn't see Jesus is because, praise the Lord, he hid himself in that body. And because their faith was not great enough to stop looking at his outward appearance, they wanted to minimize him and say, you are nothing but the carpenter's son. Praise the Lord, you are nothing but Mary's baby. But I come to tell you, he wasn't just Mary's baby. He was also Mary's God. He was the everlasting father. He was Godhead revealed in flesh. So they were looking at his outward man. 
today. And sometimes that's what we do. We got problems, but we can only look at it. What Jesus can do on the service. But I come to tell him that he's able to do me exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask to think. If you can think it, my God can do it. Praise the Lord. So if you got a problem, I heard the writer say, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Don't let Jesus pass you by because when it comes walking up and down the aisles of the church, he comes loaded with benefits. He comes loaded with peace. He comes loaded with joy. He comes loaded with happiness. He comes loaded with goodness. And I heard the Bible saying no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up rightly before him. So I come to tell you this could be your last chance. Don't let him pass you by. But when he comes by, come on, I need somebody. Hallelujah. Reach out when he passed by. Come here, Sister Richardson. When he passed by, get up, honey. When he passed by, honey. Hand. You need to grab his hand. You know why? Because this could be your last chance. This could have been their last chance to see Jesus. Grab his hand. Grab a hand. Jesus is passing by. What is he passing by with me? He's passing by with life. He's passing by with peace. He's passing by with joy. You need to stop crying and start looking at Jesus. Stop worrying about this. Why the bills gonna get paid? Stop worrying about it. If you're gonna be healed, you need to look at Jesus. Y'all ain't caught it yet. He's walking by me. And when he walks by me, he's got what you need. He needs what you got. Lord, I need your help. I can't make it by myself. But I'm passing by Jesus. And I don't want him to hide himself from me. I don't want you to go nowhere without giving me what I need. Jesus is able to fix it. Let him fix it for you. He knows what to do. These Jews said, I don't want Jesus. But one thing, he passed by your row and he gave a little light of heaven over your soul. I feel like preaching this morning. You need him too. He's passing by and he's saying, reach out and touch me because this could be your last chance to get what you need from the Lord. Jesus. Oh yes, I'm going to close here. Here comes Jesus. You see, God is busy, saints. You see, God has plenty of things to do. He's got plenty of things to do. He don't have to consider me. But I heard David say, what is man, Wally? That thou art mindful of him and the son of man that he would visit him. Look how many times, saints, you've been down on your luck. Did nobody know nothing about it? What you was going through in your heart. Oh, but you got down on your knees and you said, Lord, don't pass me by. I need your help. Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I come to tell him if you don't have the Holy Ghost, don't let this be your last chance to get what God wants you to get. He's walking up and down the aisles. He's trying to heal somebody. He's trying to save somebody. He's trying to deliver somebody. Don't let him pass you by. Reach out and touch Jesus as he comes down. Let him do what he wants to do in your life. Jesus. I'm about ready to let Jesus, the king of glory, standing in the midst of them and he's telling them exactly what they need to hear. But somehow, saints, what Jesus was saying, and I'm about to close here in a few minutes, it had fallen on deaf ears. 
somehow they couldn't receive it. They couldn't hear him, hallelujah. You see, they heard with their natural ear, but their spiritual ears were closed. You see, the Bible said it like this. Blessed is he that heareth. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying this morning. Amen. It is a blessing to hear God. But no, 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 this hear him with your natural ears. Your ear low, praise the Lord. Amen. That projects sound into your eardrum, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That speaks to your mind. No, that's not what he's saying. Let God speak to your spirit. Let him speak to your heart and tell you that you are going to make this journey. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You are not going to be lost. You are not going to go amen to a devil's hell. Why? Because when Jesus passed by your road, you will reach out and touch him. You will make the journey. I come to tell you, he's not a God afar off. He's a God at hand. That simply means that he's able to reach out and touch you right where you are at. He can give you what you need. But you got to be not like these Jews who said, no, I'm going to let God hide himself. I know. I thank God held him that when he came by my way, I didn't say, Lord, amen, hallelujah, I don't got time for you. I got to go somewhere else. I got to go out with my friends. I got to go with my boys. You know why I'm there? Because over 20 years ago, when Jesus passed by me, I'm hallelujah, that could have been my last time. But thanks be to God, I didn't let Jesus pass me by. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's been passing by some of y'all for a long time. And you've been saying, hold on, Jesus. This, I'm not quite ready, but I come to tell you that this could be your last time. Don't let him pass you by. You need to come unto him right now while I'm preaching this morning. If God's telling you that it's time to come out, come on, walk down the aisle. Come on, let God have his way. Hallelujah. He's able to do it. Yeah. Let him do what he wants to do because he's well able to do exactly what you need. that Jesus lets them know. I'm about to stop here. Verse number 19 of this chapter, they said unto, this is what they said to Jesus. They said, then they said unto him, this is Jesus, what they said unto, where is thy father? Where is thy father? You see, they should have known where the father was. It should have been a mute discussion because their law told them what the father would do when he came. They disputed Jesus, and I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. They disputed Jesus about his witness. Go back and read the text. They, saw, they told Jesus, says, if you were who you said you were, you couldn't witness for yourself. Jesus said, even though I witness for myself, my witness is true. You know why? Because I have one that witness for me, and that's the father. You don't know who he is, but I know who he is. So as they're disputing Jesus, they're saying, Lord, who do you, who do you, how, how can you walk around and say you are who you say you are? Amen. I come to tell you, hallelujah, that God don't have to tell me anything. But thanks be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I have not seen him, but yet I still believe. Thank God I have not physically saw Jesus, but I know that he exists. You know why I know he exists. Amen. Deacon is because one day when the scriptures were against me, praise God, when I was on my way, amen, out of here, one day the Lord, he passed by me. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. He came down my road. And he said, I'm not going to let you stay where you are at. I'm going to pull you out of the muck and the miry clay. 
stay. I'm going to set your feet on a rock to stay. I'm going to put dancing in your feet. I'm going to put joy in your soul. I'm on hallelujah. I'm going to take you away from everything that you think you need. Because all you need is me today. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Let me tell you something about God. This is like me and Deacon are walking together. That's how God walks with you. He'll walk with you. Amen. If you don't let him, if you don't, if you don't hide yourself from him, he won't hide himself from you. You see, God knows where we've been, saints. Uh, he knows everything. Sometimes people, and can I talk to you for a minute? Sometimes, amen, we got issues and we try to act like, you know, amen, ain't nothing wrong with me. Uh, we put a good face on. Uh, we got all the faith in the world. Uh, but I come to tell you every now and then, uh, you got to be like blind Barabbas. You got to be like Barabbas. Who's that man? Uh, hallelujah. Say, Lord, oh, hallelujah. It's me, it's me, it's me. It's me, Lord, help me. Uh, hallelujah. How praise the Lord. You hear what I'm trying to say? Sometimes you got to be like that man who cried out to Jesus and say, Lord, don't let me, son of David, have mercy on me. I want to make this journey. Thank you, Lord. Zacchaeus. It was Zacchaeus, wasn't it? Sometimes you got to be like Zacchaeus. Isn't that right? Sometimes you got to be like that blind man. That every time the Spirit of God stirred up the waters... Don't let Jesus pass you by. Don't let him pass you by. When he comes by, Brother Bobby, stick your hand out. So come on. Come with me. Come with me. You know, God has never led me somewhere I, don't, I wasn't supposed to be. See, when God leads you, I want you to catch this now. When God leads you spiritually in the way he wants you to, to go, Sandy, he leads us out of things and into, he leads us away from things that we don't need and into what we do need. God never leads you into trouble. He doesn't lead you in a, in a place where you'll be worse off. He leads you out of things that you don't need and into places that will benefit you. If you go home and read this chapter, this is the profound chapter that Jesus gives to these individuals. He spends his time trying to break through the barrier that caused them to be lost. And every time that Jesus would give them some incidental facts because they asked him, show who, where's your father? He didn't quite answer their question for the most part. But he told them in a roundabout way, who he was, that he was the father. He says, ye are from beneath. I am from above. You can't come from above unless you got. See, none of you started uh, in heaven. I didn't start in heaven. All of us started right down here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But all of that Joe did not profit them. You know why? Because at the end, they picked up stones. They told him, now we know that you have a devil because you're not yet 50 years old and you say that you know Abraham. Go ahead and read the text. This stuck out in my mind because there are so many people, saints, in our day that Jesus is walking up and down their situation. But he's hid himself. Because of their unbelief. Isn't that something to think about? Some people have cancer. Some people have illness in their body and they drive past the hospital every day. No, they got it. They won't go into the doors. Some people drive back and forth past the church. Won't go in. No, they've been trying to fix what they're dealing with. But they're too caught up, and Jesus is passing them by. The revelation of God was right before them. And the Bible said he just hid himself. That's amazing to me. 
That's why I use the analogy. If I'm in this room and everybody in here, he had an audience, didn't he? He was in the temple. And everybody in this room is determined to get their hands on me. How can I just pass by you? I come to tell you, don't let Jesus pass by. Because if he want to be hid from you, he can hide himself. If God don't want you to find him, you will never find him. But I come to tell you, he's, he can be found today. He can be found today. He can be found today. So whatever you need from him, don't let him pass you by. Don't be like these Jews that let Jesus slip out of their midst because of their unbelief. But sister love, when Jesus comes by, I want to reach out my hand and touch him. I want to reach out my hand and say, Lord, I'm going where you go. You remember what happened with, John, with, uh, with the disciples? Jesus began to speak to them in the sixth chapter of the book of St. John, and he began to t tell them about those that would follow him, that they had to eat his flesh and drink his blood. That simply meant they had to receive his doctrine. And the Bible said, after he said that, Dr. Reggie, that many of them went back. Then he turned to the 12 and he said, will you go back? Peter stood up and said, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter made up his mind, along with the 12, that I'm not going to let Jesus pass me by. What are you saying? Where else can we go? We have nobody else to turn to. Some people are turning to all type of things today, saints. While Jesus is passing right by them, they turn into a man, a woman, substance, the elements of the world. And Jesus, while he's just walking right by them, and he's trying, to get, 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 he's trying to get their attention. But Peter said, to whom shall we go? That's what you need to ask yourself. Where else can you go today? What else is out there? You didn't try everything. It didn't work, did it? <laughs> it don't work. Praise the Lord. So sometimes, Sister Richards, no matter, no matter how hard we mess with it, it just get worse the longer we touch it. Anybody ever had a, we call it, Bishop used to call it a sliver. From my neck of the woods, it's called a splinter in your finger. Now, there's a way to get a splinter out, but you got to have the right tool. So you sit there for hours picking at it. Instead of going get a set of tweezers and pulling it out. And you know what you do? A lot of times, Amy, we drive it deeper and deeper. What am I trying to say? Sometimes we just got to take the remedy. We got to go get the right tool to get the job done. I'm trying to give you an analogy. Jesus is passing by you today. Amen. Don't let him hide himself from you. Don't let the Lord pass you by today. Seek after him while he may be found. Amen. Call upon him while he is near. I don't care what you're going through. We have a God at hand and not a God afar off. We have a God that is able to get in the middle. This is what God does. He specializes, Tommy, Tommy in, in us. We are his specialty. God has a PhD, DD, S, MD, MBA, BA, BS, whatever you want to call it, in man. Every situation, deacon, that is known to man, God has a remedy for. He gets in there. This is my guy right here. He gets in there. He gets all in, in the business of us. You ever been in church and, every, and it seemed like God is just all in your business? <laughs> That's his business. You know why? Because he don't want me to pass by him without letting him fix my business. So he'll get in there. If I need some faith, he'll take out doubt. He'll put some faith in. If I need healing, he'll take out, he'll take out uh, a disease and put some healing in me. Whatever I need, he'll get in there. He'll get to working on it. And one thing I learned about God is that I never have to ask him to do his job. 
I never have to direct him, excuse me, to do his job a certain way. See, that's where we mess it up. Remember Brother Terry used to always testify how he would go, he would ask God, Lord, fix it this way. And every time he asked him, God would always do something different. You know why? Because God don't need my direction. <laughs> it's just like if you got on the operating table. Follow me here now. You, you, you got to you you, you go in and get an operation. And this is before you go under. You say, well, hold on, Doc. I was watching YouTube last night. And the, the guy on YouTube said, this is the way you're supposed to do it. You know what he's going to do? He's going to put that mask over your face and say, just go to bed. He's going to say, Mark, I know what I'm doing. That's how God is. All we got to do is that when he shows up, don't let him hide himself. <laughs> because when he gets in there, it's going to be right when he's done. See, God don't perform surgery on us and leave stuff in us that we don't need. You ever, you ever saw those, those, uh, those shows, those botched surgeries where people will have surgery and the surgeon leaves something inside of them? God don't leave something in you once he has surgery on you that you don't need. So these Jews, as I get ready to close, these Jews needed to listen to Jesus. And I come to tell you today, today is your day. Don't let Jesus pass you by. This could be your last chance. Many people, Brother Bobby, he said, well, I'm going to do it tomorrow. The songwriter said, don't put off tomorrow what you ought to do today. Let the Savior bless your soul right now. Right now. Right now. Don't let Jesus leave you without getting what you need. I don't know why I'm saying this. It is... A folly, if I can use that terminology. It is a foolish thing to have everything you need in front of you to help you and not take it. Jesus was standing there. Can you imagine Jesus talking to you? Now, if Jesus came in the building today, I would hope you would want me to get out of the way. And I would gladly do so. And I would say, Lord, this is your church. And I'm going to hear you. And I will tell them, don't leave. You can pass to the church. This don't take me off salary. But the point is simply this. I'm just kidding. But the point is simply this. When Jesus is walking by, don't let him pass you by. The Lord is in the building today. I'm about to let you go. The Lord is here. And while he's here, he's saying, as Bishop used to tell us all the time, he's waiting to be gracious. What that means is that God is waiting to load us up. I remember years ago, stand up with me, Bishop. I remember years ago, this analogy stuck with me. He, he, Bishop used to walk up and down the aisles. And he would grab, uh, he would grab um, the books, the song books out of the chairs. And he would use the analogy. Walk with me, Bishop. He would use the analogy of how God comes by. Either he would give us a blessing or he would take loads off of us. Sometimes we're carrying a bunch of stuff. You guys remember that? You guys were in those services. We, sometimes we're carrying things that we don't need to carry. And the Lord will come by. He'll just pick them up, take them away from us. But in order for that burden to be lifted, when he passed by, we got to give it to him. Jesus was passing by them. But they weren't willing to let their burdens go. Jesus is passing by you today. He wants to do two things. He wants to take something from you and give you something else. While Jesus is passing by, thank you, Bishop. While Jesus is passing by, you need to come. Singers can come right now. While Jesus is passing by you, he's walking up and down the aisles, showing his hand faithful. He's moving in the midst of his church. The Bible said he's the God. That is working salvation in the midst of the earth. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, you need to come right now. We have altar workers that will work with you. We will explain to you the plan of salvation. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. God himself will fill you with the Holy Ghost. 
This is what they failed to realize. He was the light of the world. The light is every man that cometh into it. He was the God of their fathers, robed and veiled in.